All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. Cheers for liking. Cheers for, for subscribing, for sharing, for, for tuning in. I appreciate it. I really, really do. I, re- I know there's millions of podcasts to choose from, right? Uh, an, un- an ungodly amount of podcasts to choose from. So I know you have other options. So I appreciate you tuning into my one. Means the world. Because every fucking comic out there has one now, right? They all have these uh, podcasts. A lot of them are on YouTube. Some people said to me I should have my podcast from YouTube where I'll set up a little studio and you sit there and look at me while I say the same shit. Uh, I don't know if I would do that. I don't see the point in that. Um, why would you want to look at me, right? When you just, this, what this is for, just a few minutes of just jibber jabber. Why do you want to see the jibber jabber, right? Because you can listen to this when you're driving, listen to this when you're in the shower. You can listen to this any listen to when you make love. <laughs> you imagine you're home with your loved one. Hello, darling. Let me light some candles and put on some cheaper than therapy and all yours. Alright, lads, welcome back. <laughs> oh, you fucking idiot. Um yeah, so I, I like audio better than than uh, someone just said to me you should you should do it and I could do it I could set up a little you know lights camera action all that kind of stuff and just do uh, a visual one but you know just what's the point right this one I do anywhere I could do it from anywhere do it from a car from the bathtub I could do just do it from anywhere um, how are you doing though I I tell you I I am missing. Uh, I am missing the yeah, I'm I'm binge watching too much stuff. No, that's that's not true. That's that's a lie. I don't like I'm not a big TV guy. Uh cuz I have done stuff, you know, to to better my I know when I go into this rant cuz you've heard me all about what you do at your time and blah blah blah. You know I go work out, obviously. You know uh, I'm le- I've learned chess. I'm not good at it yet. But I can play a game now. So if anybody wants to play me online, uh I don't know any apps. Feel free to uh, to reach out to me. I'd like I'd like some practice to play because I go play online. These people bail halfway through it because the game is long. So I don't know if it's just guys realizing or girls realizing I'm just shitting. They go fuck this guy. I'm whooping his. Ass. There's no contest here, you know. Or else somebody just starts the game and then their dinner is ready and then they go. All right, there's my food. I'm gonna just leave. My food got delivered. So now I'm just gonna fucking hop off this. So if you want to jump online here and tell me what app you use, I'd love to play in a game of chess. Learning that, learning, uh, you can hear the fire, the fucking, the fire department's engine or sirens go off there. You know, it's funny in Ireland, we used to always, whenever you heard like a siren, you blessed yourself. You always blessed yourself when I, when you heard like a siren or an ambulance just go off. Weird, right? I fucking, this is outside my house, so I hear it all the live long day. You'd be, you'd be knocked out smacking yourself in the forehead, blessing yourself if you lived here. You really would. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm learning chess, playing guitar a lot more. My friend, Terry Malone from Ireland is putting up a lot of stuff online. Uh, he's been playing a lot of guitar and posting it and he's, I think he's obviously, I think he's better than me at playing, but we've talked online about, you know, playing in public and, uh, you know, something I've never had the balls to do. Isn't that funny? Because you do, you do, is this fucking sorry? Everyone's going to shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. We get it. Someone's in trouble. I mean, if the firemen don't hear it after the first one, right? Like, woo, woo, woo. They're not going to like, ah, oh, let's just, why keep it going? Why keep this fucking fire going? The siren going, we, we get it. There's a fire. Our fucking, still going. Like, do you, do you know, does that make sense? Like, how many more of these does the fireman need to get up off his fucking arse and go do something? Jesus Christ. Like, it's like they're hitting a snooze button. It's like there's a fucking snooze button going off and they're just like, yeah, yeah, five more minutes, but the alarms just keep going and going and going. Fuck me. I even think during World War II when they had those sirens when the bombers were coming in, they didn't go on this long. They didn't go on this long. And what's going on? What do you think is happening? What do you think? Someone in Long Island has fucking got into a fender bender. Watch, some fucking Egypt now just got fucking stuck something. Jesus Christ. Oh, for fuck... Like, you know what I mean? Am I... Fucking hell, finally. Jesus, sorry about that, folks. Anyway, Christ almighty. As I was saying, 
my friend Terry Malone back in Ireland was kind of saying, uh, you know, we should, you know, play, you should play in public and that kind of stuff and play online. He's doing it. And I'd love to. And I've always had people say like, oh, you do stand up. You're so brave. I don't know. I'd never do it. And like, I think singing, like, singing and playing guitar in public would be uh, terrifying. It really would. Um, but that's just me. So I, I guess I admire musicians, uh, you know. Someone said to me, he's a musician and a comedian. And he said that comedians want to be musicians and musicians always want to be comedians. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if there's any, any, uh, any truth to that whatsoever. But anyway, I've been, um, so I've been making use of my time and, uh, I've been trying to learn Spanish and, uh, you know what I I put on to help me? Uh, I put on, I was going to put on Telemundo, right? Which is like the, the local Spanish channel. And, uh, it's just ridiculous. Like how those girls dress. Unbelievable. Like it's, it's very, like I, they're always, they're always happy. They're always so excited. Those those Spanish girls on Telemundo, right? And they're just they're just dancing. There's random dancing on Telemundo, like just random smiles and dancing. A plane he crashed into Peru. A mountain in Peru. La 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 la. Fucking just dancing. Knockers hanging out everywhere. So I said, I'm not learning. I'm not learning Spanish here. So I put on Narcos. If you haven't watched Narcos on Netflix, it's a really really good show. It's a lot of the some English, some English, but most of it is Spanish. Shows a lot of reading. Uh, but it's fucking, I'm just so like, but I guess I'm learning angry Spanish, right? So like I go to bed every night, I'm just lying there and I just go, puto. (laughs) Anytime my kids are annoying me, ah, puto. (laughs) Buenos dias, puto. That's how I'm learning all the bad language. That's all I'm doing. It's the first thing you do. And then I was wondering, because the first two seasons are about Pablo Escobar. And then the next one is about the uh, the four the four leaders of the Cali cartel. Uh, season three is about him, about them, those four lads. And then I, I'm watching these shows, right? And all these different, like you, the, you know, the Spanish speaking people, obviously from uh, Colombia. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, what if people from Colombia are watching that, right? Because there's obviously different accents when it comes to Spanish. And I wonder, are they getting mad the way Irish people got mad of gangs in New York when Leonardo DiCaprio tried to talk? Or when Tom Cruise in Far, of a, far Away tried to do an Irish accent? Right? I wonder, I wonder like, do, do people from Colombia watch that show and just go fucking go nuts and go like, that's not how we talk. Who the fuck is this guy doing our shitty accents? That's the worst Colombian accent I've ever heard. But for the rest of us, we're like, yeah, let's fucking watch it. It's awesome. It's awesome. We don't know the difference, right? So then it made me kind of go easier on, on the DiCaprios of the world and the Tom Cruises who do shitty Irish accents. Leave the pride at home, you know? You can't always get it and they don't they don't write it for us. They don't write it for us. It's like comics. When you watch a show, uh, what was it, like Crashing was a show about stand-up comedy. Uh, I'm Dying Up Here, a show about stand-up comedy. The Marvelous Miss Maisel. I never watched an episode of that, but comics were always like, ah, that's not really realistic. Yeah, asshole, they're not writing it for you. They're not writing it for you, you open micer. They're writing it for everyone else who doesn't do stand-up comedy. You think you think when they made the movie Apollo 13, that when they're up in space and Tom Hanks presses two buttons and pulls a lever, that the 19 astronauts that's ever existed go up and say, you know what, you wouldn't pull that lever. You twist the knob, you twist the knob and hit the B41 button and then you would pull the lever. This show is shit. This movie's terrible. All right? People don't uh, suspend their disbelief. But I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. But I love this show Narcos, man. It's fucking... I don't... I, I think I am learning from it. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm picking up an accent. I think that's what I'm doing more than anything because I'm learning Spanish. I'm trying to pick up their accent almost. And uh, you know what I loved about though when you put on Narcos? You know those warning signs that come up when you watch an HBO show or Stars or Showtime or something that comes up? D, V, S, uh, you know, drugs, violence, sex, uh, L for language. Right when you put it on Netflix, what comes up in the top left corner? It's uh, comes up. It says sex, drugs, violence, and smoking. <laughs> yeah, like you're sitting at home, you're watching a show about the cartel, the the biggest drug lords in the world, where the fucking mur- nonstop murder, nonstop shooting, loads of shooting. 
Do you know the one thing it doesn't do, though? It doesn't exploit women, which is really cool. Like, it's not like women don't have those classic roles where they're just in the background. Ideas Mio with their breasts hanging out. It's like, you know, all the women characters in it are strong women characters, and it's kind of it's kind of cool. Like, it's not like that cliche, but there's no sex in it, but they still just put it up. Sex, drugs, violence, and then smoking. Like, you're going to sit at home and watch it. Honey, let's put on that show Narcos. Really? Yeah, what's it like? I haven't seen it before. You know me, would I like it? Oh, I don't know. Phil, Phil was talking about it at work. He said it was really good. Uh, what, what's it about? What's it about? It's got about the Cali cartel. What do they do? Hang on a second. Let's look at the warning sign. They have sex in it. Oh, okay, I, I could watch sex. It's not. It's got violence. Oh, you know, violence. Drugs. Oh, honey, you know how I feel about drugs. And it's got smoking. Forget it. Forget, forget it. You can have sex, drugs, and violence, but smoking, no way, Jose. Am I going to put up with smoking? That is just ridiculous. <laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, I don't know why you're advertising that it's got smoking and it is an offensive thing because if you're smoking nowadays you're a fucking idiot like let's be honest right you're just a fucking idiot we I mean it's it's we've done years and years of trying to tell people that smoking is just terrible for you uh, the coronavirus is fucking just flying through people like Italy because Italy are like a high smoke a lot of people smoke I like a cigarette I want to have another cigarette Please, Mama. I want to have a cigarette. You are six. You are six, Paolo. Why do you have a six years old having a cigarette? Right? Babies are smoking in Italy. And that's why fucking... That's not true. Babies are not smoking. But everyone smokes in Italy. And that was one of the reasons why a lot of people... Uh, the coronavirus fucking went straight through them. That's why they have a high death rate over there. Stay off the cigarettes, everybody. Right? You're, I just think in this day and age, you don't need that warning. You're a fucking idiot if you smoke... You're, you're fucking, you know it causes cancer. You know it does. It's not like it could cause cancer or scientists go, it might cause cancer. No, you fucking idiot. It definitely causes cancer. It de- it's definitely causing cancer. Right? If you got on the Titanic back in 1912, April 4th? April 4th, I think, or was it April 12th? I'm not sure. And, uh, right? And all of a sudden you went and you... Um, you you got on the Titanic and something said, "Hey, listen, this will definitely hit an iceberg." You go, "Well, I'm not going to get on it then." Like, can smoking will cause cancer, but yet fucking idiots are still getting onto it, right? Still getting onto it, still smoking, fucking morons. But um, anyway, that's my uh, that I'm sorry. It's just, like I was talking to to another comic the other day. I was saying like I, uh, oh, fuck man, I miss stand up. I really do. Really miss stand up a lot now. At this stage, it's kind of getting to me. Um, I'm using the time for my for my benefit. I'm using it as like as I said before in other episodes. I'm using it as a as a blessing, like as, as in let me take advantage of it. But man, it's fucking tough. It's tough. I'd even take a cruise gig. That's how desperate I am. I'd even take a cruise gig now. At this stage, just to just to get on a ship and just go do, and I and I, I would never do a cruise gig. Like I, I've done three cruises, but let me explain the difference. I've never worked for a carnival or or one of those ones with the big fucking you know starfish painted on the side of the ship. Uh, I've never done any of those, but I have done with private produced shows. What I mean by private produced show, I've done two at Celtic Thunder. I've done one with Andy Cooney, and basically what they do is they um. I don't have to answer to a cruise director, meaning there's nobody standing at the side of the stage watching what I say. So I don't have to worry about it. I just, you know, but I would even do that because most comics, when they do a cruise ship, it's like if you're a cruise ship comic, like it's it's very lucrative. You can make a lot of money, but your freedom is taken from you. Your creative creative freedom is just murdered. It really is. And I just like, I fucking, like I, there's a, bo- a book out there called Boat Hack by Jimmy Dunn. Very funny comic. Very nice guy. Friend of mine from Boston. And he's got a, a just like short paragraphs of how shitty the gigs are. And uh, it's interesting. If you want to pick it up actually or just Google it. It's, 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 it's very funny. And uh, I just miss it so much, man. And I think with this slow opening, maybe I'll go on stage soon. You never know. Maybe. I, don't, I still don't want to do it out of my living room. I can't do it out of my... I just can't. I know there's some comics out there and I get your... Like, I don't know if you're doing it because you're desperate and you're just trying to... 
I don't know, get the money, get money, which I understand your heart, and I can't fault you for that. I really can't fault you for that. Um, maybe it's for some guys who want to be creative, but for some guys who think they're going to be like, ugh, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel. I just, I, I wouldn't say you should do it. Just try get a different job while this is, d- d- don't you stand up because you're going to be remembered for this, right? In years down the line, when this is over, when we look back, they're calling this the next generation. Like they're calling this, what's it? The Z generation. They're calling it, this is their 9-11. I saw that on NBC. This is Generation Z's 9-11, right? Um, so I'm not going to fucking comment on that, but I don't think it is their 9-11, right? Because when 9-11 happened, uh, it was out of people's control and people came together. What's happening here is people are not coming together. People are being assholes. They're not fucking obeying the law. They're fucking like those Michigan fucking idiots are out in the streets you know, protesting, there's a bunch of fucking, uh, you know, we're all idiots. Like, I've seen these videos of Hasidic Jews trying to be told to, hey, listen, guys, stay inside. Stop all these large gatherings. Not only are they not obeying it, but they're they're fucking, they're coughing and spitting on cops, right? I've seen those videos online. So we're all all fucking idiots. So this is not our 9-11. I don't think it is because 9-11 people pulled together, right? Patriotism was on a high, you would hang a flag out your window. Every place got an American flag out your window on the back of your car. Everyone came together after 9-11, right? That horrific thing. Now what's happening? We're not coming together. We're just showing that we're all fucking idiots and nobody's nobody's doing their part. Nobody is doing their part. Some are. Let me take that back. Some are. Other people fucking morons. You know, they're fucking out. Just, just, stay. if you're going out, stay away from people. Like, it's just, I get, I get it. Go for, you know, I went for a drive the other day by myself. I always do that. I always just go like, I got to go outside for, for uh, an hour. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking throwing stuff out of the, out into the garbage just so I have an excuse to go leave and get it. Out of apple juice. Go, 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 down the sink. And I was driving around, and I pulled up uh, down near the water, and you know it was parked car next to me, my 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 Jeep Wrangler, my old Jeep Wrangler, not a model like it, my actual Jeep Wrangler that I used to own. And I was like, I was like seeing an ex girlfriend. Do you ever bump into your ex? And here's the thing about this one: like I I loved this Jeep. Like the car I have now, I like my car because. It's reliable. It does the things it's supposed to do. It takes me to the place I need to go. It's good on gas. It does this. I loved my Jeep Wrangler. Like this is just this is just my car now. This is just my car, but my Jeep Wrangler. Oh my god, I loved it. Loved it. We had such good times. We went all these cool places together. We did all my all my cool stuff. I did in the Jeep Wrangler, snowboarding. Surfing, all of it was just a great time in my Jeep Wrangler. And I was just like bumping into an ex. Do you ever bump into an ex? Depending on how you left it. Isn't it weird? Isn't it? Like it kind of sticks, they stick on your mind for like a few days after you saw them. I saw my Jeep Wrangler, man. Like, and even like today, like the top, I was like, oh, you, you took your top down. I see that. Huh. Huh. And the guy just took the top down with ease. I remember he used to get stuck on me. Like, oh yeah, you t- you took the top down for him, but for me, yeah, yeah, I used to always used to be a, used to always struggle to get your top down. And now you just fucking took your top down, no problem for this guy. Oh, I, I like you got the big wheels done. Oh, you got those made bigger. Because when I was with you, you know what I mean. Like, I went and I got advice and I said, no, nah, it wouldn't be a good idea to get them bigger. But now all of a sudden you can get them done bigger. I get it. I understand. You won't get them bigger for me, but you'll get them bigger for him. I get it, sweetheart. I get it. <laughs> it was fucking weird, man. It was just like seeing, like, I don't know. It's just the weirdest feeling. Like bumping into an ex. I think, I think you owe me money. I think there's money in the glove box. I think I left $40 in the glove box. She owes me $40. And I nearly asked for it. I nearly asked for it. I really did. Do you, you ever bump into an ex that owes you money after so many years? And you go like, hey, remember that, uh, that, that money I gave you? That's how I felt. You got $40 in the glove box. I know I left it in the glove box. I'm like, yeah, remember the $40 I left in there? Any chance I could have it? Like, 
Fuck you. You're not getting it back. You're not getting it back. That was so long ago. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I miss her. I do. But, uh... Anyway, look, I, I'm going to wrap it up there. I only kind of came out to talk. I got some good guests coming on this week, though. I really do. Got some very, very good guests. Like I said, I, I'm going to try this week to have my buddy on from WWE. Uh, I have... Um, I can't... I don't want to say who's coming on, just in case I can't can't seal the deal. But we have some good guests coming up this week on the old Mick Thomas show. But uh, listen, thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, please send them to my Instagram, Mick Thomas Comedy, and I'll be happy to answer them uh, either on the show or off the show. I do appreciate it. I hope you're feeling well, guys. Please be safe. Do the right thing. Wash yourself, you dirty bastards. And uh, if you think it's a good idea for me to do like a video show, then let me know. Send me a message, and I'll uh, maybe I'll consider it. Maybe. Maybe I'll talk to me tech guys. All right, lads, thanks so much. Stay well, stay safe. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you real soon. Good luck to you. Good luck to you now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.